Hey, it's James Mulvaney here. Today we are at Foundation FM and we've just been filming a little bit of a behind the scenes case study and um, talking about this station, how they run it and the amazing things they're doing. So I thought it'd be interesting whilst we're here just to have a quick look around the studio and kind of nerd out on how everything works. Let's go. All right, so we are in the Foundation FM studios and we're now going to cut to their on-air setup and Frankie's going to talk us through how everything works, which is really exciting and it's got an incredible setup here. Ah, oh, thank you. So um, it's a really uh, simple, small setup, we think. Um, this is for Rode mics, so you can have guests over here, then the DJ, um, yeah, all run through uh, the Alan Heath desk here. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just run it through our Mac, which is connected to Radio Co really easily. And we've got the interface to make sure that we're getting all of this equipment in through straight to the Mac. And we have our CDJs here. Yeah. So do you find that this is quite easy to train people up and, and can people get their heads around it quite quickly? I always say if I can get my head around it, yeah. anyone can get their head around it. Yeah, because if you think about it, you've just got like the the main components and we've labeled it really easily. So all your mics are labeled here mm -hmm. and it's one, two, three, four. And then we're always like, don't worry about anything else. Just make sure the, the main fade is up and then we've got AUX, Mac, Dex. So it's just really easily labeled. And because we had this set up, we go, don't worry about any of this. That's our problem. So yeah, it's a pretty easy set up. And because everything's run through this Mac, um, I think it's quite a universal thing that people have got used to. Yeah. So yeah, it's quite a good space to train people and I think it's quite a good first radio station to kind of get your head around things. And when you were building the studio, yeah. how did you choose all the equipment? How did you kind of figure it all out? I think it was a lot of talking to the right people. Yeah. So we're not ever going to pretend that we, we know the most about all of the technical side. It's something I really had to learn while we were building this studio. Um, I'd never been an engineer. Like if you go to certain radio stations, you more likely have a tech engineer team. Yeah. So yeah, it was something I was really starting from uh, scratch, but we're really lucky that we had great people around us and just like had all those conversations um, and asking for um, recommendations. And I think people always like a little bit scared to ask or not know what they're talking about. Whereas we're here like, we're learning too. Like we need to know the answers and just start on that dialogue. So yeah, like I'm really lucky that I just knew a couple of engineers that could point me in the right direction. So yeah, like um, we're really lucky, basically. And um, what advice would you give to someone who's wanting to build like a radio studio similar to this? Yeah, I would say the first thing you need to think about is soundproofing. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the most important things in the, because you know, this is concrete, this is an old car park. So it was very echoey and right. you're never gonna make great sounding radio with that. Um, so definitely the investment in that and then investment in good mics, I always think is important. But I think if you're just starting out, it's not the end of the world if you don't have the best of the best. Like everyone's just trying to make radio out here. So I would always say look into what's available to you. Like we have um, Rode mics that can plug into phones yep. and we have um, Zoom mics that we can take out and about. So like we're always able to adapt. Um, always just kind of think about what could go wrong so you know what you need in case anything goes wrong. So just always think about, you know, are these mics going to be faulty? Like at one point, is this desk going to cut out? Like if that desk cut out, then we've got the decks so and we can put them straight through because of the interface to the Mac. Like um, if this Mac fails, I can plug all of this into my laptop. Yeah. Like it's thinking about how everything can become adaptable and you can just keep moving without it being the end of the world. And also um, you mentioned before, you've got sort of like a kit that you can take out on to location yeah. as well. Do you think that's quite important for what you do here? Yeah, for sure. Like, first of all, I think it means that we, with internet radio, one of the things I love is that being able to broadcast for anywhere. So you don't actually need like a station. You don't need like a studio. Mm. Don't get me wrong. Do I love having one? Yes. But I have, we have an inter a second interface. It's a Scarlet. Um, we have a couple of road mics that we can just take out SM58 that we can just plug into anything. Yeah. And then you can just plug the mics into the interface, the interface into your laptop, and then you're good to go as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. Radio station from anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. So I'd say like if you're looking to start a studio or a station, like invest in the small things first and then build up from there for cool. sure. Thanks very much, Frankie. No, thank you. Cheers. <laughs>